Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Tuesday Live at 5. This is Lena Gursa. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. And today I am super excited to share with you these fun, bright, happy cards. Non-Christmas cards, because I am quite done with Christmas, I gotta tell you. <laughs> Um, using the Stitch Triangle dies from Stampin' Up! as well as the Ridiculously Awesome Stamp Set. Now these two items are not bundled together, but they work really, really well together. So I'm going to show you these three projects today. Before I do, I'm going to show you um, the two products that I'm featuring. So the first one is this set of dies called Stitch Triangles. Now this is available in a, um, a bundle with another stamp set. I didn't actually get that stamp set. Um, I really thought that I would get a lot of use out of the dies, and I wasn't too sure I would use the stamp set all that much. So I just bought the dies. This is one of the rare occasions where I don't buy the, I didn't buy the bundle. Um, but I love these dies. The more I play with them, the more ideas I have that um, I can use them for. So we have three different um, sizes and shapes of triangle of triangle um, and each each different shape has several different size dies. Okay, so one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six in this one. One, two, three, four, five, six in this one. And one, two, three, four in this one. Okay, so lots of options there. And we have a really cool border die. And then this one, which cuts out a little peekaboo window, which I'll show you later. And then we have a little banner die. So awesome, versatile set of dies. And then the stamp set that I decided to pair it with today is the ridiculously awesome stamp set. Now, the um, sentiments in this were actually hand lettered um, by Sean Douglas, who is the husband of Stampin' Up! CEO Sarah Douglas. So he does some amazing hand lettering. And so he helped um, design this along with uh, Rhonda Wade, who this is her million dollar stamp set. And it has awesome sentiments and really cool fonts. I just love this set. And I love that um, you can make the sentiment sort of your focal point on the card with this set which is why I thought it would pair really well with these dies. So let me just see who's joining me here today. Hi, Deb and Gail. And we've got Judy and Patty and Gail Bradshaw from Oakville. How are you, Gail? Um, so we're going to get right to it. I'm going to make these three cards. We're going to start with this sunshine one. I posted this earlier today. Um, it also has a little sneaky peeky of some celebration product that's coming up. So I will show you that in a minute. But I love this card. I had so much fun with it. Um, it's super sparkly. I went a little Wink of Stella crazy on this. I'll actually tell you a secret. My Wink, wink of Stella actually barfed all over this card. <laughs> so I don't know if you've ever had that where you're applying Wink and you squeeze a little too hard and you get a big of um, glitter on your card. So it happened right in the center of my sun. So what did I do? Well, I spread out as much as I could and then I just cut um, another circle of the exact same size and glued it right over top. Hid my mistake. Problem solved. My husband came in right after I'd done that, and he's like, oh. <laughs> Even he could tell it wasn't good. All right. So we're going to make this card. I'm going to show you how. Let's see who else is watching here. We've got Sue and Krista. Hello. Hi, Violet from Wawa. I bet it's cold and snowy up there. My parents are certainly cold and snowy where they are up in Perry Sound. So, All right. So we are going to start with a piece of beautiful beautiful ombre dsp now this is a little sneak peek from celebration celebration starts uh january 5th and uh one of the freebies is a pack of this beautiful ombre paper so um each um, sheet is double-sided, obviously. So we have the Bermuda Bay side, and then we have this beautiful Blushing Bride side. How gorgeous. Oh, so many ideas for that. But we're going to use the Bermuda Bay side. These, this is 6x6 six six paper, okay? And it is available starting January 5th free with a $60 order, okay? So we're going to start with this. And I actually, for a change, cut my um, background panel the exact same size as my card front. I don't often do that, but I didn't really really want a border on this one. I kind of wanted the sun to be the focal point there. So that is our background panel. Now we're going to, I'm going to show you how we're going to put together the sun. So I'll dump out all my little die cut triangles here. First thing we're going to do is add a little sponging. So my colors that I used here were um, Daffodil Delight for the yellow and Mango Melody for the orangey shade. Okay, now when we're sponging, I'm going to sponge with one shade darker, or a darker shade, I should say, not one shade darker, a darker shade than what I used 
um, in the cardstock. So on the Daffodil Delight, I'm going to sponge with Mango Melody. So I'm just going to take my dauber and I want to sponge fairly generously. I'm not just doing the edges. I'm kind of going up to um, the stitched border there because I want this to look kind of glowy, if that makes any sense. Okay, so there's my circle. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I only need to do the long sides of each triangle because the short side is gonna be hidden each time. So we're just gonna do these all real quick with the dauber. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect. It certainly doesn't need to be perfectly even. We just wanna add that little bit of shading. Let's see who else is tuned in here. I can actually look at comments while I'm doing this. It's great. Hi, Sue from Calgary. How are you doing? Now, I am dying to play with the new blending brushes. Now, in the new catalog, you will see, and by the way, catalogs are being mailed out this week. So if you have not, not already filled out my catalog request form, um, please take a minute today and do that. Um, you will find it on my page here. Um, and that's how I will know that you want a catalog. They are free. I am more than happy to send you one for free, but I need to know you want one. So if you'd like one, just be sure to fill out that um, little request form. Okay. Hi, Bonnie McLaren. How are you doing? Um, yes, I did. I used the triangle dies to cut out the triangles. The nice thing about that, a lot of people think, oh, I can cut a triangle by hand. Well, you can, but you can't get that cool stitched edge, right? So that's the sort of selling point for me on these dies is that beautiful stitched edge. So I've sponged all of my Daffodil Delight pieces with the Mango Melody. And then I'm going to take my Mango Melody pieces and I'm going to sponge them with Pumpkin Pie. Now my Pumpkin Pie ink pad has seen better days, but it still works. It's not pretty, but it works. So you'll see how you just get that little bit of a darker shadow on it. And it just, I really like the way that it um, pops when you layer your pieces together to create the sun. So we're just going to sponge all of these guys real quick. Now I'll show you which size dies I used for these. I only used two different sizes to make my sun. So let me just finish doing these and then I'll show you which, which two I used. Almost there. I should have done this ahead of time. I've been a little busy of late. <laughs> We, for those who haven't heard, had a little bit of a flood. No, not a little, a lot of a flood in our dining room this weekend. Uh, we had a toilet overflow upstairs and it came through our ceiling and we have a big mess right now. So I've been dealing with a lot of that. I almost wasn't sure. Well, I wasn't sure I'd be able to do this video today, actually, because I wasn't sure if we'd have work crews in the house. But there is a holdup with the insurance. So anyway, <laughs> we're good to go tonight. Next week, I'm not so sure. So I'll just quick show you. Um, so for the larger triangle, I used this die. So it's the third, one, two, third largest die. Okay, for the smaller triangle, I used the second largest one. This is a really teeny itty bitty one. I didn't use that one. Okay, all right. So we're going to build our sun. So I'm going to start with four of my small Daffodil Delight triangles. And what I did is I used my grid paper. I'm just going to lay these out to get these so that they are straight and even. So I'm kind of, lay see how I'm lining the point of my triangle up with the, the line on the grid paper? Because they are gonna tuck behind, I need a little bit more space between these guys. They are gonna tuck behind my circle like that, okay? So I'm gonna line all of these up and you're gonna find, or you're gonna see actually when I do, that they line up so that they are, I, I creates a little square in the center. Okay, do you see that? So then I can just adhere my circle right over top. So what we're gonna do is take a little bit of Tombow, and actually I think I did the Mango Melody ones first, but it doesn't really matter. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of Tombow along that short edge of each triangle. And then I'm gonna take and just layer my circle right over top. And that's how I get things nice and even and straight. So I'm just going to let that sit for a second. Okay, then we're going to take our orange triangles, our mango triangles, and they are going to tuck in behind in between, just like this. Okay, so again, really quick and easy to do. I'm just going to put a little bit of Tombow on there. Oh, that guy didn't stick because I didn't give him long enough to set up. 
let's just put that guy back. I'm rushing it. Cannot rush glue drying. <laughs> okay, let's put another one over here. We'll just kind of pop this up and tuck it in behind. And then another one here. Tuck it in behind. Just make sure that that's not sticking out too far. Let's tuck that in a little bit further. There we go. And then this little guy is going to go right here. Now you could totally leave it like this. If you want a smaller sun, um, I think it looks pretty great just like this. Okay. Um, but I wanted it to be the focal point of my card. So I went with another layer. So now we're going to go back to the yellow and this time the yellow is going to tuck in behind. So you see how it creates a little V there. So we're going to tuck the yellow in behind, um, the little V. So again, I'm going to put a little bit of Tombow along the short edge and we're going to tuck that in behind and I'm going to tuck it in so that it goes down far enough. So I don't see the point sort of on either side. Okay, so it's gonna go in right about that far. Okay, and then same thing on the opposite side. So I'll lift that up and tuck it in. Okay, and then we need one at three o'clock and nine o'clock. So we'll tuck this one in at three o'clock. Right about there. And one more at nine o'clock over here. Now I'm really hoping this doesn't all end up stuck to my grid paper when I'm done because I'm not picking it up in between. So we're hoping that we don't have Tombow ooze and we're not stuck to the grid paper. Hello, Wendy Roy. How are you? Um, so now we're going to finish this off with um, some orange ones. Okay. And these guys were actually going to pop up. So I'm going to add, do I have any minis? Where are you minis? There you are. They're buried. So we have minis and we're going to put them along again, the short edge. So sort of two there we'll get rid of our backing. And then that is going to tuck in there just like that. And then we're going to add another two, get rid of our backings. My fingers are not working very well because they are cold. <laughs> it is freezing in here. So we'll tuck that one in there. And rotate and repeat. So these guys here. Yeah, so we have, our dining room is totally ripped apart right now. We had to move everything out of there. We had an insurance adjuster, or not adjuster, an, uh, an appraiser guy here yet last night who, you know, told us what needed to be done. Um, but we are hung up with the insurance claim. We have not got confirmation of coverage yet because we have to get a plumber certificate. So we are in the process of trying to get a hold of a plumber to get that done. And you know how it goes when you're working full time and a teacher, you can't just kind of answer the phone or emails whenever you feel like it. But anyway, there's our son. <laughs> this is all going to work out. So we're not going to worry. So I'm going to kind of place that on my, um, DSP piece just to kind of get an idea of where I want to stamp my sentiment. Okay, so I need to think about rotating this so that my sentiment is going to go right down in that bottom corner. So I'm going to grab my black ink. You can use whichever black you need or you have. It doesn't really matter. I'm just using Memento because it's kind of my fave. Um, but you can use whatever black ink you have and we'll just stamp that right down in the corner just like that. Okay, and then we're going to glue our sun onto our DSP. So let me cover that up before I <laughs> do something I don't want to do. So that is going to get glued right about there. All right, so I'm going to just take and put a little bit of Tombow. Oh, you see what I did? I overlap. This is what we don't want to do. We don't want to overlap because then we don't get things lying flat. Let's get that guy out of there and put him there instead. There we go. That'll lie flatter. And this one too. Okay, I shouldn't talk while doing this because I forgot about the overlapping thing. There we go, that's better. That will lie flatter. Okay, so we're gonna put a little bit of Tombow on our four sort of orangey 
um, triangles here. That's what's going to actually adhere it to the front of our card. And again, I'm just going to rotate this so that it goes on so I, I'm not covering up my sentiment. And I'm just going to let that sit for a sec to set up. Okay. And then I'm going to trim off the excess. I'm just going to flip it over and grab my snips. And we're just going to trim along using the edge of the DSP as a guide. We're just going to trim off the excess bits that are poking out. So I'll do that and that. And this guy, I have some very inky fingers. Can you see how yellow my fingers are? <laughs> and we'll get this little guy here. And then this little guy. There we go. Okay, so there's our sun. All set. So our last step, sorry, my voice is kind of going in and out. I've done a lot of talking today. <laughs> Um, I have my Bermuda Bay card base, so it coordinates with my background. It is five and a half by eight and a half, scored in the middle at four and a quarter. So we're going to fold that along our score line. And then we're going to add a little bit of adhesive. I'm going to use a little bit of seal. Get that on there. Hello, Jen. And we are going to put this on. Now, there's no border here, right? So we want to make sure we are lining up the bottom edge. And this is hard to do because I can't look straight down on it. Bottom edge with the bottom edge of our card base so that we have complete coverage. Okay. Last little touch is to add some gold gems, which I apparently forgot. So <laughs> here we are. These are the... Uh, Gold, glitter, enamel, I can't remember what they're called. <laughs> I'll have to look it up. I'll post it in the in the description afterwards. Um, these are only available online, okay? Um, they are not in the catalog, okay? So I will post the item number for that. But there you go. Now, of course, our last touch, and we're going to try not to have our wink explode this time, um, is to add some beautiful sparkle and shine. So you see, like it... I always have to add, I have to do a little squeeze. Now I'm gonna learn from my mistake and I am going to squeeze it over here so that if it decides to have a little accident, it does it on my grid paper. So we're just going to add some winky wink here and sparkle that up. You cannot have too much glitter and shine on a sun in my humble opinion. So we'll just get that going. Lots and lots of sparkle here. There we go. All right. There is our sparkly, glittery, sunshiny sun. All right. Now I'll just show you what I did on the inside here. I added um, another stamp from the stamp set. It says, P.S. I love you. And to sort of accent it, I actually took my Mango Melody blends and just traced over the lettering to give it a little bit of a shadow. And I just love that look. It just kind of adds a little something and brings a little bit of the, the uh, sun's glow to the inside of the card. Okay, so that is number one. Super simple. All right, so let's clean up a little bit. We'll set that aside. And I'm going to bring in number two. Number two is this fun, funky geometric card. Um, I am not one who does a lot of geometric cards, but I really, really love the look of them. And so I thought, well, let's just step out of our comfort zone and do something a little different. So this one is a bit of a fun fold, not super complicated. It's just I've cut it a little bit off of the, the standard card base to sort of highlight um, that triangle background and highlight the sentiment. Okay. Now this little strip is the little strip I had left over from cutting my card base. Okay. So waste not, want not. <laughs> I used it on the inside. Well, on my card design. It's actually inside, seen on the outside. So let's uh, do that one. I will show you how I put that one together. I just need to move some stuff out of the way here. So we're going to start. Come on, all you bits. Out you come. With our card base. So our card base, all I've done is I've taken a standard five and a half by eight and a half card base. I've scored it in the middle at four and a quarter. And then I cut off. Let me tell you exactly how much I cut off. I cut off an inch and a quarter. From, the, from one side, okay? And that's what gives me that smaller card front so that I can have my DSP 
kind of as a peekaboo from the inside. Okay, so let's put together our geometric um, triangle pattern and then we'll put the whole thing together. So here I have a piece of basic black cardstock. It is two and three quarters by five and a quarter. So two and three quarters by five and a quarter. And what I'm going to do is lay this on my grid paper. Now I'm gonna put this down. You're not gonna be able to see my bottom edge. So I will figure out where I want it and then I will move it up. What I did actually is I lined it up so that the center, uh, I wanted to find the center of my card. So if I do this at five and a quarter, so where's five and a quarter? It's right there, okay. So then I'm going to take one of my magenta madness triangles. Okay. So this is the same. Is it the same? No, it's one size up that I used on the sun. So same shape, just one size larger than the largest one I used on the sun. And we are going to glue this on. We want this to be in the middle. Now that needs to be at two and three eighths. So two and a half It's going to go over that way just a bit. Okay, this is easier to do when you're right on your ruler, but I know that that's not showing on the camera. So I'm not going to put it way down the bottom. You guys can't see. All right, so I'm going to lay out all my triangles. So I am alternating colors. So I've got Magenta Madness, Bermuda Bay, Gorgeous Grape. Oh, how I love this color combo. And then on the other side, I'm going to add a Gorgeous Grape going this way. And I'm going to add a Bermuda Bay going this way. Okay, now that's not quite centered. So we're gonna slide this over just a titch until we get that exactly where we want it. Let me see if I can do it this way. If we go, this is gonna be centered right there-ish, I believe. Okay, so let's try that. Put that there, slide these over. That's gonna look better. Okay, so then I've got an extra magenta madness triangle that's going to sort of tuck on there just to cover, fill that little gap at the end. And then this guy is going to come on here once I get these guys moved over. Okay, so take your time when you're laying these out. You just want to make sure you kind of get them um, centered and equidistant. It'll look better if you do it that way. Okay, so I'm going to start with my center triangle. I'm going to add just a little bit of Tombow. I love this color combo too, Heather. It makes me very happy. And honestly, we all need a little happy right now. <laughs> um, so we're gonna center that and I'm just kind of lining it up with my grid line there just to try and get it straight. And I wanna have sort of a border at the bottom and a little bit of a border at the top. Okay, and then I'm gonna do my two on either side. So they're gonna be inverted. And I want to glue this on so that my border between the triangles is equal to my border at uh, along the base there. Okay, do you see that? And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Thanks, Sue. I love these colors too. I'm feeling the need for some brights these days. <laughs> There's not a lot of bright happening outdoors right now. So we have to make our own, own light, right? Our own color. Okay, and then I'm gonna go to my gorgeous grape. So I'm working from the center out, okay? That's the best way to get this even and um, centered. All right, so there is my gorgeous grape. We're gonna add our Bermuda Bay on this side. Honestly, I'm gonna be so sad when Magenta Madness goes away. Thank goodness we have another year. <laughs> I'm really hoping it becomes an in color or a, a core color during the next color renovation because I sure love it. All right, so now I'm gonna put just a little bit of, of adhesive. Oh, I put it on the wrong side, wouldn't you know it? Shouldn't talk and do this at the same time uh, because I'm just gonna put a little bit of this on and then we're gonna trim off the excess in a minute. So we're gonna pop that on there. Now I have very sticky fingers. Now I know how all the people at my classes feel when, or <laughs> when they get glue all over their fingers. Uh, and we're going to add a little bit here and just tuck that on on the end. Okay, so there's our pattern. So easy to do with these awesome dies. So I'm going to flip this over and hope it's not glued to my grid paper <laughs> and we're going to trim this off. So I'm just going to take my snips right along the edge of my black layer and just trim that right straight across. Okay, and there's just a little smidge of the purple triangle there. And then same thing here, we got a little smidge of the Bermuda Bay and 
we'll trim this off right along the edge again. There we go. Isn't that fun? Oh, how I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. That's the hard part on this card. The rest is a piece of cake. So we have our card base. I'm going to fold along my score line. I've got glue on here that I need to get off. It's going to bug me. Oh, and look at that. I've already got something on there. Oh, well, can I hide that? No, we can't. <laughs> it is what it is. I will hide it with something else on the inside later. Okay. So we have our card base. Uh, before I glue this on, it's going to go right there. It's going to be centered on there. But before I do that, I'm going to add some glitter organdy ribbon. This is, again, one of those products that I will cry long and hard when it goes away <laughs> because I love it. It is the perfect little blingy touch on just about every card. It's just awesome. It works with everything because it's black. So we're going to add a glue dot on each end of our ribbon. And this ribbon is going to be a very tight squeeze, but it will fit. Um, it's going to go on about mm, half to, to five-eighths of an inch from the left edge. This was just a piece of scrap I had left over, and it just was long enough. Okay. And then that is going to get glued onto our card front there. So we'll add a little bit of snail. Not snail. Seal. Oh, almost set myself back a couple of years there. I have not used snail to adhere cards together in a long time. Okay, so now we are going to go ahead and add that to our card front. So we'll pop that on. And again, we just want to make sure we have a nice even border all the way around. Okay, and then we have our little DSP strip. So this is cut to one inch, nope, one and a quarter by a five and a quarter. Okay, and it's going to glue inside our card on this panel here, and we want to have an equal border on the top and one long edge there. Okay, so it's going to have an equal border there. So we'll just put a little bit of Tombow on there and pop it on just like that. Okay. And then we're going to stamp our sentiment. So my sentiment is going to get stamped on a whisper white stitched rectangle. So the nice thing about these stitch dies is we have lots of other stitch dies that coordinate with them, right? So um, the, this one coordinates. I love just having that extra stitching detail. It just adds so much to your design. So we are going to use this Make Today Ridiculously Awesome stamp. And again, our black ink. We'll ink that up. Now you want to really ink these stamps well um, so you get a nice crisp black image. Okay, this is a really bold uh, font, so you need quite a bit of ink to cover all that real estate. And we're going to go ahead and just stamp that right in the middle of our stitch rectangle. Hi, Julie. Oh, I got Julie and Julie watching. Hi, Julie Curran and Julie Williamson. Okay, there is my awesome sentiment. So that now is going to get layered on a piece of basic black cardstock. So I just cut this on my trimmer. Um, I wanted to have a really narrow border. And the next size up in this die set is actually quite a bit wider. And I didn't want that wide a border. So this is cut to two and a quarter by three and what is that? Five eighths, three and five eighths. Again, I'll put these measurements up afterwards. Um, so I'm going to put a little bit of Tombow on there and we'll pop that on. Hi, Lindy. How are you doing? Hope you're good. These cards are simpler today so I can chit chat with you guys more. It's nice. <laughs> All right. So then this is going to go onto the front of our card and get popped up. Now we want to make sure we're only putting dimensionals on the part that is going on this panel, right? We don't want to put dimensionals all the way across or we're going to glue our card shut. So I have my sheet of dimensionals here that were cut right through. So I have to kind of maneuver these a little bit. And so I want my dimensionals to kind of go on this half, right? I don't want them to be visible or extend past the front of this front panel of the card. So we're going to put four just about there. And we'll get rid of our backings. And this is going to get popped on. So we're going to center this on the entire card front. Okay. So I'm kind of looking at it side to side 
and it's gonna go on right about there and hopefully straight, okay? And then we're gonna add a little bow. This again was left over from another um, project. So we're just gonna press the knot of the bow into a glue dot and just put it right at the bottom of the rectangle there where it, it goes over top of the, the ribbon in the background. Okay, then we're gonna add some bling. So again, I just have some odds and ends of rhinestones here. So we're just gonna add a couple here and there just for fun. And I'm gonna have to snip off some more of my little row of rhinestones here. Some of you will probably remember when we carried these rhinestones with all the rows of them. There we go, a little bit of bling. Okay, now on the inside, um, I stamped the you got this, okay? I'm not gonna do that right now because I need to come up with something. I'm probably gonna put a label or something in there to hide my little, I don't even know what that is or how it got there, but there's a little icky bit there that I wanna hide. So I'm not gonna take the time to stamp the sentiment just now, um, but I will fix that and we'll be good to go. All right, so fun, happy, cheerful card. I agree, Deb, it's just a happy card. And I'm all about the happy this week, <laughs> believe me. <laughs> All right, last one we're going to make is this fun one. Now this was inspired by another card that I saw on maybe Pinterest or Instagram, I can't remember, um, that someone had done with another company's triangle dies. And I thought this was a really cool idea to create a scene using triangles because there's an awful lot of things in nature that are triangular. So we have mountains, we have evergreen trees and a lake. So I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make that scene. So we'll pull out all of these little bits to start. And I'm going to need some inks and some daubers. I got too much stuff here. I need to make some room. Crowded. All right, so we're going to build our scene on another stitched rectangle. This is a size up from the one we used on the last card. I will set this aside. We're going to do that for a sentiment in a few minutes. But to start, this large triangle, so this is an assos, no, equilateral triangle, equal on all three sides. Um, and we are going to sponge that. So I used the second largest one. Okay, so that's these ones, second largest die. And we are going to sponge it to start with a little bit of Coastal Cabana. This is cut from Pool Party cardstock to start. Um, and then I'm going to take a little bit of Coastal Cabana ink and do a little bit of sponging. Now for this one, I'm gonna start kind of um, sort of doing a little flicking around the edges and then I'm gonna come in and add a little bit more ink as we go. So we're just gonna do a little flicky flicky all the way around the edges. Now this dauber is not in great shape. It's starting to, starting to fail. We're getting the little nubbies on there. As soon as you start to get the little, see the little knobbies on the, um, on the sponge? That's when it's time to replace your dauber. Okay, it, it won't um, sponge as evenly as you'll probably want it to. Um, so that's when it's time to get a new one. All right, so there is my Coastal Cabana. Okay, I'm not completely covering it. I want to be able to see the pool party kind of through the ink. And then I'm going to come in with a little bit of Bermuda Bay and darken down my edges. So this time I'm going to come on, but I'm not going to come on as far. Okay, and that's just gonna give me a nice dark edge all the way around. But again, it's not gonna hide my Coastal Cabana or my pool party, so I'm kind of getting the three shades there. This reminds me a little bit of that ombre paper that we used on the first card. You could probably use some of that paper, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, to get this a similar effect for this card. Okay, so there we go. That's our lake. Easy peasy, right? All right, next we are going to sponge our mountains. Now, I need to talk about this for a sec. Um, these are cut from Smoky Slate cardstock. Again, oh, these are equilateral. These, this is not equilateral. This is a right angle triangle. These are equilateral. These are isosceles. I do know my geometry <laughs> sometimes. Okay, so these are cut from Smoky Slate cardstock. Okay, um, and we're gonna sponge it with some basic gray ink. So I'm going a little bit darker. Now, I just put my finger right in the ink pad. Holy cow, you guys. <laughs> I'm a little distracted today. Now, this is, is going to look a little different than you normally see me do, okay? So I'm first going to sponge like I normally do. So kind of doing the flicky flicky. I'm only doing sort of along the bottom and partway up the two sides, 
okay? I'm not sponging the entire thing. But then I'm gonna come in and I'm actually gonna do a little bit of daubering. Like literally, I'm just kind of tapping the ink on there because I want it to kind of look like a shadow. Okay, it looks a little different. That's not a look that I normally um, use, but I really like the look of this to make it look like a mountain. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing here. So I'm gonna first kind of do my flicky flicky all the way around. Okay, and then again, I'm gonna just add a couple little dabs here and there to kind of create that shadow mountain look okay now what i did on my sample that i'm not going to take the time to do today just because of the dry time but you see how the top of my mountain is is, is whiter i actually took and daubered on a little bit of uh, whisper white craft ink okay and added that to the top of the mountains and that gave the appearance of snow i'm not going to take the time to do that i can always add it afterwards um be just because it takes a long time to dry craft ink takes an hour to dry fully. Now you can speed it up a little bit with your heat tool, but it still does take um, quite a bit longer than, than well, way longer than our classic ink. Our classic ink dries almost instantly. So um, to get that sort of frosted mountain look, I use some Whisper White Craft Ink, okay? But I'm not gonna do that now because I don't want you to have to sit here and watch ink dry. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awfully boring. All right, now I have very inky fingers, so we're going to try not to get fingerprints all over our um, stitch rectangle here. So I'm going to start building my scene. I'm going to start with my lake, okay? And it's going to go a mm, little bit above halfway, well, maybe halfway, okay? And it's not going to go all the way across. I'm going to have a piece that I'm going to trim off in a minute, okay? So there's my lake. I'm going to put my larger triangle for my mountain, off to the left a little bit, and then my smaller one is going to tuck in behind, kind of like that, okay? Then I have my smaller green triangles. These are cut from shaded spruce cardstock, and I'm going to arrange those where I want them, okay? So this is kind of what we're going for here, this kind of look. Okay, and the different sizes of triangles kind of give you that perspective, right? Now, I'm not liking that this triangle is, this mountain is looking almost the same size as the other one. So we're going to tuck that down a little bit so that we have the, the difference in size. Okay, so that's what we're going for. I'm going to just kind of move these out of the way so we can glue these pieces on. So we're going to take our lake piece and again, making sure we put glue where we actually want it to go. <laughs> we're going to put this here. And it is different, isn't it, Heather? It's certainly not my usual style, but I just, I'm kind of stepping outside the box this week. See, we can all do things that we are not, that we don't usually do, right? We can all learn new things. Um, so then I'm going to put my large mountain on. And we're gonna just kind of slide it over. Now, the big thing with this is you wanna make sure these are straight, right? You don't want <laughs> leaning mountains. <laughs> So we're going to try to keep those straight. All right, this little guy, before this glue is set up, he's going to tuck in behind. So we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of adhesive there. Tuck it in there. Okay, and just glue those down. Okay, and then we're going to add our pine trees. So again, a little bit, and I, I always use liquid glue whenever I'm doing um, something that I know I may want to like reposition. Um, the liquid glue just makes it easier because it has that extra little bit of setup time. I used to actually use snail. This is what I would use snail for <laughs> when I was trying to design and position things. That's the only time I used to use snail because snail was not permanent. And then just a little dip bitty dab of glue on this little guy. And we'll tuck him in behind like that. Okay, so there's our lake scene. How easy was that? So, so easy. Now I also, re oh, no, I did not forget. Look at that, I'm more prepared than I thought I was. So now we're gonna do a little flicking. Okay, so I'm gonna take my basic gray ink and I'm gonna just kind of squish the lid a little bit so that I get some in the, um, the sort of the well of the lid. And we are going to do a little bit of flicking with our aqua painter. So oh, let me move this so I don't get that messed up. Um, so I'm going to just get a little bit of water going here. Okay, so I have a little bit of a palette. And I'm going to pick that up and then just flick. 
Okay, that's it. You can add as much or as little as you like. And that's it. So simple to add really, really subtle texture. Okay, so we're gonna give that a second to dry. And while it is doing that, we are going to stamp our sentiment. So my sentiment is faith, let your faith be bigger than your fear. And man, oh man, do I need that right now. <laughs> I guess it's been a kind of interesting for a few months. Anyway, we are not going to get into that. We are just going to focus on the fact that this is a really awesome and inspiring card and it will inspire someone that you know, I guarantee it. So here I have a stitched square. So this is from the Stitched Shapes dies. Again, I love that it coordinates with the stitched edges on the triangle. Um, this I think is the second largest stamp in, or die in that set. And then I wanted the word faith to really stand out. So I decided to use my Stampin' Write markers to ink my stamp and get the two-tone look. So we're going to start by inking um, the basic gray. So the let your and then bigger than your fear is going to be in the basic gray. So when you're doing this, you want to always ink with the side of your marker. Okay, I'm not trying to trace the letters. I'm just kind of brushing over them. That's the way you'll get the best coverage. And you always want to be using your brush tip. Okay, there's a fine tip on these markers as well. And if you use the fine tip, you will be here until the cows come home because you won't get enough ink onto your stamp. Okay, so you need to use your brush tip for this. Um, if you want to get good coverage. Okay, so there is that. And then we're going to bring in the Bermuda Bay to do the word faith. So same thing, I'm using that brush tip. And I'm just brushing over my letters here. My stomach is growling, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you can hear it on the camera, it's really loud. Uh, we have our, our lunch break at school right now in this weird, weird schedule that we're on is at 10.05 a.m. So I eat lunch every day at 10.05 a.m. <laughs> Which I gotta admit, uh, when you get up at five and have breakfast at 5.30, you're actually hungry by 10.05. Uh, but it also means you are extremely hungry by dinner time. <laughs> and my stomach is always growling like crazy. So, anywho, you don't need to hear my tales of woe. There is my stamp fully eight. Now, here's a tip. Whenever you are doing this technique using your markers, you want to make sure the ink is re-moistened before you stamp. So you just take and kind of do a little huff and puff on your stamp to re-moisten the ink and then stamp on your square. And there you go. Isn't that pretty? I love that look. It's a little bit softer than when you ink with an ink pad. Um, it's almost like a watercolory look and I just think it works really well for this design. All right, so now I have a basic gray square that we are going to layer behind this. Again, I just cut this um, by hand. It's two and a quarter inches square, okay? And that's just gonna get layered on there. So let's do that. Yes, Deb, lunch at 10. It's kind of crazy, but whatever. <laughs> there are a lot of things that are crazy these days. I'm just rolling with it. What else can you do? All right, so that is that. I This is now pretty much dry, so we're gonna trim off our excess bits here from our little mountain scene. So I'll just take my snips and get rid of those. Okay, and then that is also going to get layered as soon as I find what I did with my little kit here. So we have a piece of basic gray, again, hand cut. This is cut to three and one eighth by four and a half. Okay, and that will give you your layer with a very narrow border behind your stitched rectangle. So again, we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of glue to the back of our stitched rectangle. And we will pop this on and center it, get nice even border all the way around. Okay. And then again, I don't know what I was thinking. I just all, normally I always have a border. Two cards today that don't have a border. So <laughs> I don't know. I'm turning over a new leaf on all kinds of areas. So this is a piece of smoky slate cardstock. It is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So it's cut to fit the full card front. And I have embossed it using the tasteful textile embossing folder, which I absolutely adore. So we are actually going to start by gluing this panel on before we adhere the rest of our card together. So I'm going to go ahead and fold my card base. This is a smoky slate card base. Um, now you absolutely could emboss your card front. I just personally 
like to have it clean on the inside. I don't like to see the embossing from the front. That's why I do a layer. You do not have to do that. It's just the way I roll. <laughs> okay. So this is cut to five and a half by eight and a half. It's scored in the middle at four and a quarter. So we'll fold that in half along our score line. And then I'm actually going to apply my adhesive to my card base this time, just because sometimes the seal likes to pull up the cardstock of when you have an embossed panel. So this way I will avoid that problem. And I'm just going to go ahead and layer my embossed panel right over the card front, just taking the time to make sure this is lined up and nice and straight. This is a little bit wider than my card base. That's okay. We'll trim it off afterwards. Okay. And then, actually, no, you know what? I'm going to trim it off now. Otherwise, I won't get my image centered. So we're just going to take and trim this. Just with the snips. You could also use a guillotine trimmer if you have one. Mine is not handy at the moment. Normally, I would just use my little mini trimmer to cut that off. But this works too. Okay. So there is my card front. Then I'm going to go ahead and glue my scene on. Now, we're going to lay this in. I'm just going to show you how I sort of align this, okay? I wanted my mountain to kind of be coming out of my sentiment. I just thought mountains and faith for me are kind of synonymous. So uh, for me, I wanted to have that, that sort of connection there. Um, so I adhered this so that I had an equal border on two sides of my my scene and then the same size border on two sides of my sentiment okay so can you see equal border here equal border here okay now this is going to get popped up so we're going to just leave that for a sec we're going to go ahead and glue this guy on i can use some seal here okay and i just know it's going to go right about there it's about three eighths of an inch top and bottom okay and then this guy is going to go on here and I'm going to add some dimensionals to pop this one up so we'll just do one two three four and get rid of our backings and then we're going to pop this on right about there oh, it might have been a little bit high oh well it's okay there we go Okay, so simple. And then just to add a little bit of shimmer, I added some silver metallic pearls. Now, this does not make this not a guy card. This totally is a masculine card, even with the pearls on here. I think that because they're metallic pearls, I think they totally work. Um, some people may feel differently, but I don't think pearls only belong on girl cards. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about that. Um, bling is always a good idea, right? Right, so let's just add a couple more of these guys. So I'm kind of doing three and three to kind of add a little accent to my, whoopsie, where'd you go? To my scene here, to my sentiment rather. Okay, there we go. Now on the inside, I added the You Got This stamp again, and this one is sort of a like a sparkle image or a shimmer, okay, um, to highlight the sentiment a little bit. But that is that so easy and fun and fun to play with I have to tell you now let me show you I'm just going to show you quickly um, I mentioned this kind of fun sort of peek through die so I'll show you a card that I did with that so here again I used that die just several times I just kind of moved it along my card front here and um, so I cut it first and then I embossed using the Argyle embossing folder and I put some rainbow glimmer paper behind it. And I just love the way that sort of ombre rainbow look sort of peeks through the die cut. But super simple card. We're all about simple and graphic this week. So I thought that was kind of a cool way to use that, um, that die. And then one other project I want to show you. I'm actually going to demonstrate this. Um, in a video next week, it will not be alive. Um, I'm, I'm going to record it and post it. It'll post to my YouTube channel, but look at these fun little triangle Christmas tree boxes. They are so cute. Now this one I actually made to hold treats. It opens. Okay. And I've got some yummy Lindor truffles in there. Um, this one I just made, I didn't, you could make it to open. I actually sealed it shut because I thought it would make a cute little scene. You could make really cute little home decor with that. Um, but I'll show you, these are so easy to make, like so easy. So I, I'm going to do a video. It'll be pre-recorded and edited and it'll post next week to my YouTube channel. 
Okay. All right, you guys, that is it for me this week. Let me bring back all of our projects one more time. Here we go. All right, I am busy doing report cards tonight. They have to be done by tomorrow. So that is going to be my evening. I hope you guys have a great evening and an even better week. And I will see you next week for another episode of Tuesday Live at 5. Bye for now.